especially at Christmas, he writes, he says, people are generous and gracious. They bring large quantities of food to our doorstep, but they don't want to bother us by ringing the bell or even knocking. So they just leave things by the front door. That's a problem, or so they say, he says. We don't know for sure because we don't get to see what they brought. We just often see traces of what they brought. We know someone has brought us a perishable gift because there are usually bits of paper and ribbon scattered around the front lawn. And when we are able to locate a card, we write a thank you note. But we're always vague because we aren't ever sure what we are saying thank you for. Maybe we should ask Shadow to write the notes. And if you are a dog person, you've probably heard that chocolate and caffeine will kill your dog. He says, not true. It will keep her up late into the night, but it won't kill her. At least that's been our experience. And, you know, you think of animals. They have that instinct. And according to Andy, that Shadow, his black lab, doesn't seem to have a a choice about where she focuses her attention. And you know, usually at night when I go to take Daisy out, our mixed lab, I'll get here and because nothing like not paying attention and there's a rabbit. Because I'll guarantee you, it, she's gone. And it's only 25 feet on that extended <laughs> leash. All right, that goes. And I have found myself on the ground. <laughs> So now I often will go, before I even open the door, I'll look, I'll say, Daisy, no. <laughs> Trying to keep her attention onto what Master says, as opposed to what might be outside that door. And so that's what we do. And I keep saying, no, no, even if there's nothing there. That's what I tell, because I need to keep her attention. And it's worked to the point where she'll see it and she'll stop and i'll say no she has that choice most lately she's been listening but you know i think many things when we look at the animal kingdom they don't have a choice they follow their instincts but you and i do not need to be ruled by things that grab or capture our attention you know, we always say, oh, something shiny. If you're ADHD, oh, it's all something shiny. There was a squirrel. He ran off on that path. There you go. You see, that brings us really to the principle of choice. You get to choose what you give your attention to. Which leads me to those two other verbs I want to, to give here. Besides grab attention or capture attention, you can choose to give your attention. Or you can choose to pay attention. I tell that to my ball players. I said, I know it's late. I know your minds are swirling all over there. I know the girl's diamond is loud. Okay? But I need you to pay attention. I need you to focus. And you have to make a choice. But here's the key. You see, emotions tend to fuel the things that grab or capture our attention. And intentionality tends to fuel what you pay and give attention to. That choice of choosing what you're going to pay attention to. And on every path that leads to disaster or destruction, there is something powerful and emotionally engaging that summoned us that grabbed or captured our attention. Which is why Solomon warns, good verses to memorize, Proverbs 4, 25 through 27. Let your eyes look straight forward, ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. Guess what that implies? Sometimes you can, you can make the level paths. They don't have to be rocky, and they don't have to go around and swerve everywhere. If we what? Fix our gaze directly before us. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Make 
a choice. Choose which direction you will go and then fix your gaze directly <laughs> on it. That's what we're being told. What you give your attention to determines your direction. And the direction you head, what? Determines your destination. So I want to ask you a sincere question. What has your attention these days? What is it that you're focusing on? Is it a relationship, a career, a house, an enjoyable pastime? Is it a person who's leading you somewhere you don't really want to go or a person who's leading you towards where you do want to go? Is it your marriage, your children, your faith? Is it an achievement that you're hoping to accomplish soon? What is it that has your attention? Think about it. What has popped into your head? What has your attention? You see, what captures or grabs your attention or what you choose to pay or give attention to will determine your direction. And your direction determines your destination. And if we go for everything that looks shiny, we often don't get to where we need to be. So here's a second question. What do you want to have your attention? If you could only fix your eyes on one thing, what would it be? What would it be? Five weeks in the series, I want to make a suggestion. Paul puts it this way. He describes this approach to life. He says, forgetting what is behind, straining toward what is ahead? I press on towards the, what? The goal, the final destination, to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And he follows that up at verse 15. He says, ready for this one? I should have put this up here too. But Paul, let's look. Okay? That's all good, right? And then in verse 15, he says this. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. Now, you don't want to be called immature, do you? You don't want to be called childish, right? So, all of us who are mature are going to take this into effect. Forgetting what is behind. Straining towards what is ahead. Pressing on towards the goal. That's what he's focusing on. Almost every book of the Bible describes the same focused life in some way. The author of Hebrews says that he says that we must pay more attention or careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we what do not what? Drift away. Some of us understand that. We have drifted away from the faith at some point in time for a while, and we wondered how that happened. It happened because of the principle of attention. Our eyes, our attention followed something other than God, and we wound up drifting away. It's always a good reminder. God's the same spot. We're the ones who are drifting. We're the ones who are altering our path. Here's what we need to do to stay on that right path spiritually. If we look at Hebrews 12, another passage that you might find familiar, he says, let us what? Fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. For the joy set, he what? Was he joyful at the cross? No, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. I like that verb. Fix. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Don't swerve to the right or to the left. Don't let your eyes wander. And this is my suggestion for all of us. Don't let our hearts or our attention be captured by lesser things. Guess that? By lesser things. 
focus our attention on Jesus, on following him, getting to know him better, serving him more fully, becoming like him more and more every day. In the early days of Christianity, when persecutions were, were just beginning, an unknown saint wrote a song that described well the path that Jesus took. It might sound familiar. He says, Jesus, being in very nature God, did not regard, regard equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him in the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, and that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Have you heard that before? You have. Because Paul used that song in his letter to the church in Philippi. Philippians 2, we know this, verses 6 through 11. He wrote that, and he said that one day, every person, everyone with knees will bow before Jesus, no matter where their paths has taken them. It doesn't make a difference. And on that day, some will be in heaven, some will be on earth, and those are the new heavens and the new earth we learned about when we talked about the new heaven and the new earth? But some will be, ready for this, under the earth. They'll bow in that destination. And you know what? Think about this. Under the earth is not a direction there that anybody wants to take. Remember a few weeks ago, we learn that the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. And here's the danger that we need to see. If we pursue anything less than Jesus, we may end up bowing our knee before him from a destination that we never wanted to arrive at. And that's why Hebrews 12, 2 says, fix your eyes on Jesus. He's the path to heaven, the path to fulfillment, the path to purpose, the path to where you want to go. He said it this way, Jesus did, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And another word for way is what? Path. I am the way, he said, I am the path. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me, he says. And because whatever you give your attention to, have you got this yet? How many times have I said it? Everything you give your attention to will determine your direction. And whatever direction you head will determine where you wind up. You see, you have a choice. You can follow Jesus or you can follow something less. It never looks that way, though, does it? Our emotion has grabbed our attention. That shininess has grabbed it. You know, you can let your attention be grabbed by something that feels good for the moment, or you can give your attention to the one who will direct you all the days of your life on to eternity. So it really comes down to this. Which way will you choose? Which 